is super easy and ready to use doing it this way. With all the growing concerns around the world, food shortages, hyperinflation, this is a survival tip that you need to know how to do. Meat may not be available in the future or it may be overpriced. We need to have a way to preserve our meat in case we don't have refrigeration or a freezer. This method of storing your meat could save you a ton of money. Buying it now while it's available, stockpiling up meat and being able to keep it for a long period of time. Let's dive in and teach you this one. So yet another survival tip I think everyone should know and be aware of, whether you're ready to start canning right now or not. This method with canning meat could also save you a lot of money. Buying meat at a lower cost now rather than later at a higher price, you may come across some meat at a store with a best buy date with a short shelf life, but being able to stockpile up that meat, bring it home and preserve it for a long period of time could be super beneficial. Welcome back to all the subs. If you're new here, we provide weekly tips. If you like weekly tips, be sure to hit the notification bell. Okay, so like I said, today we're canning meat. We're gonna can ground beef, hamburger. Doing it this way is super easy. Not only is it super easy, it's ready to serve after you store it. All you gotta do is warm it up. So it's really good to have a pressure canner for canning meat because it's a low acid. If you do not have a pressure canner and you're in an emergency situation and you need to can some meat, you need to preserve stuff because maybe you lost power. I'll also leave a link to a video at the end of this video showing you how to do it without a pressure canner, how they did it pre-1980. Canning meat will give you a shelf life of up to 10 years, but they only recommend one year, as long as that seal stays good. Also remember, before you get started, you're gonna need about a three hour window from start to finish to do this canning process, just in case you've got somewhere to go and you're not gonna have a three hour block to get this done. Let's go through a few things that we're gonna need. We'll be using the All-American Pressure Canner. It's a model 921. Today we're canning in pint-sized jars. They will hold approximately one pound of ground beef in each jar. Got ground beef ready to go. Funnel, measuring spatula. Seasoning, if you'd like to add seasoning now. Vinegar, hot water. A pot or pan to brown your meat. Jar grabber. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is lightly brown the meat. Okay, so you can see she's just browning up this ground beef. Got another one going over here because we're about to preserve 16 pounds of ground beef. Okay, so once you're done, you're gonna wanna strain out all of the fat and liquid. You can also use a slotted spoon. Okay, we're at this stage now. We've got the ground beef all filled up in this first row of jars. Again, these are pint-sized jars and you're gonna pack them in there and fill them up to about an inch to inch and a quarter below the top of the jar. You're gonna be right below this bottom line. If you have one of these, they have a little measuring mark. You just slide it down there and you can see you're where you need to be. And again, each pint is gonna hold a pound of hamburger. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take boiling water and fill those jars up to the same level as the hamburger. Remember, if you guys like weekly tips, survival tips, know-hows, be sure to hit that notification bell if you don't wanna miss now one. on this next row of jars, we're gonna add taco seasoning to the meat. 
So we're gonna put two and a half teaspoons to a pint-sized jar at the bottom of the jar before we pack the meat. If you'd like to know how to make taco seasoning that is fantastic, I'll put that picture up in the screen right now. taco seasoning in there. Now we'll add the ground beef before we add the boiling water. Okay, you can see we got all of them filled up with water. Next thing is to grab your vinegar to wipe down the tops of the jars. Next step is to put your lids on. You're gonna to wanna to put them nice hand tight. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the canner ready. Like I said, we have an all-American metal-to-metal seal canner. So with this canner, you have to take some olive oil and oil up this metal-to-metal -metal rim. It's gonna help it keep from sticking. So your pressure cooker should come with a manual. It'll tell you just how to do the process of all of this. There's also a great website to resource. It's called National Center for Home Preservation. Go onto the site, pick which food you're canning, and it'll tell you exactly what to do. Another great thing to have is a book, Complete Guide to Pressure Canning. There may be a time you're trying to preserve all your meat because your freezer goes out because you lose electricity. It's gonna be good to have a book on hand or some written down instructions. Okay, we're gonna put one rack at the bottom of our pressure canner. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add three, about three inches of water. Be sure to check the manual with your pressure cooker. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add two tablespoons of vinegar to the water. It's gonna prevent water marks, mineral deposits on the jars, etc. Okay, so in our all-American pressure canner, we've got three inches of hot water before we add the jar. Okay, so here's a pro tip. If you are using smaller jars, like our pint jars are fairly small, and we got three inches of water in there, you don't want your jars to be submerged. Maybe you're using a half pint jar. The pro tip is you can put these rings underneath your layer dividers, raise up the jar. You don't wanna skimp on your water, but you don't want your jar submerged. Okay, so there you go, a set of rings. Then we'll just place another one of these over the top. That way, when you set your jar down in here, it's not gonna be completely submerged by the water. Okay, so there you go. We've got a whole rack of pint-sized jars. You can see that water currently is about halfway up the jar. Now we're gonna put in our second rack. Okay, so when you uh, have to put a little riser down there because you're jars are a little bit squattier you will raise the level so for the top to fit i'm gonna have to do one less jar on the top row okay for those of you that have this one you're gonna want to tighten this side then this side then this side then this side and just keep going back and forth that way it sends it down nice and even Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is put it on high. And what we want is steam coming out of this little port 
for about 10 minutes before we add the weighted gauge. Okay, so here's another pro tip. On these pressure canners, this little weighted gauge weight is something that you cannot lose. So I would recommend buying a secondary backup because if you don't have this guy, it don't work. Okay, you can see we're steaming here out of the vent. We're gonna set the timer for about 10 minutes before we put on our weight. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. We're gonna put on our weight. We are a 15 because we're above a thousand feet elevation. So what we're looking for here is jiggling. Once it starts jiggling, we're gonna adjust the heat so that it sputters about one to four times every minute. Want it to jiggle one to four times a minute. So here, we're at a constant jiggle. We're gonna turn our heat down and find that balance. And on our gauge, we're gonna try to stay about 11 to 13. So now the thing that people get timid about is this part. It's not that hard. It's kind of like riding a bike. You get one under your belt, and the next time you do it, you're gonna feel like a pro. Every stove and cooker is gonna be different, and it's just gonna be a matter of you learning that stove or that cooker and how your dial affects the pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna show you real quick what a sputter moment looks like. So that's about how long the sputter little sections last and you want one to four every minute with our canner and what we're canning. So you can see this is where our sweet spot is for our pressure canner. Once everything's hot and we're sputtering, we're just above low. And when you get all that figured out, it's gonna make it a lot easier. All right, so when you've reached the end of your time, you're done, you're gonna turn off the heat and you're gonna let the pressure gauge go down before you do anything. Okay, everyone, so this thing has finally cooled down. I know by the pressure, the pressures went to zero. It's taken us about around 55 minutes, maybe 50 minutes for it to completely calm down, cool down. You don't have to do this right away. You could wait another hour if you want, but you're gonna take off your weight and you're gonna do it away from yourself in case there's still any steam in there. Next thing you're gonna do is loosen this up just the same way, opposites, Now this whole thing is still really hot. Okay, so when you take this thing off, you're gonna open it up away from yourself. That way you don't get a steam burn. You're gonna do a little quarter turn this way, and you're gonna open it up away from yourself. There you can see, you can still see it's boiling in there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and let it cool a little bit longer with where it's at before we remove them and put them on a towel. Okay, it's been a couple hours. These things are still bubbling, but we're gonna take them out, put them on a cloth on the countertop. After taking all of them out in the bottom, we still have about two inches of water left. Okay, so we let these cool overnight. You wanna let them cool for 12 to 24 hours. You can see the difference. This is just the regular ground beef. This is the one we added taco seasoning to. At this point, you're gonna remove all of the screw bands from the jars. And then you're gonna wanna inspect and test. You wanna make sure that there's no popped tops. Look across it, make sure it's concaved down. And if all looks right, you're good to go. Now, like I said before, the USDA only recommends a shelf life of one year. But as long as your seals stay good, you keep it in a cool, dark place, 
Canned meat is known to be good for up to 15 years. As long as it smells good, everything looks right. Especially good to know in an emergency situation. Again, you're gonna wanna store them in a clean, cool, and dark place. Best temperatures are 38 degrees to 45 degrees. And that's 3.3 to 7.2 Celsius. At this point, you also wanna make sure that you label the tops of your jars, ground beef, the date, and remember, this is a super good skill to know how to do. Whether you're ready right now or not, consider picking up a pressure canner. We will leave links down in the description below. And don't forget to send this out to people. I think this is a survival skill everyone should know how to do, especially with the growing concern with these times. We'll have lots more coming up with pressure canning. Be sure to hit that notification bell. We'll see you guys on the next one.